friends, we now continue with Beverly Cleary's Dear Mr. Henshaw. November 27th. Dear Mr. Henshaw, here we go again. I'll never write another list of questions for an author to answer, no matter what the teacher says. Number six, do you like school? School is okay, I guess. That's where the kids are. The best thing about sixth grade in my new school is that if I hang in, I'll get out. Number seven, who are your friends? I don't have a lot of friends in my new school. Mom says maybe I'm a loner, but I don't know. A new, boy, a new boy in school has to be pretty cautious until he gets to know who's who. Maybe I'm just a boy nobody pays much attention to. The only time anybody paid much attention to me was in my last school when I gave the book report on ways to amuse a dog. After my report, some people went to the library to get the book. The kids here pay more attention to my lunch than they do to me. They really watch to see what I have in my lunch because Katie gives me such good things. I wish somebody would ask me over sometime after school. I stay around kicking a soccer ball with some of the other kids so they won't think I am stuck up or anything, but nobody asks me over. Number eight, who is your favorite teacher? I don't have a favorite teacher, but I really like Mr. Friendly. He's the custodian. He's always fair about who gets to pass out milk at lunchtime. And once when he had to clean up after someone who threw up in the hall, he didn't even look cross. He just said, looks like somebody's been whooping it up and started sprinkling sawdust around. Mom used to get mad at dad for whooping it up, but she didn't mean throwing up. She meant he stayed too long at the truck stop outside of town. Two more questions to go. Maybe I won't answer them. So there, ha ha, leave off. I'm worried about him. December 1st. Dear Mr. Henshaw, okay, you win because mom is still nagging me and I don't have anything else to do. I'll answer your last two questions if it takes all night. Number nine, what bothers you? It's a good question. What bothers me about what? I don't know what you mean, I guess. I'm bothered by a lot of things. I am bothered when someone steals something out of my lunch bag. I don't know enough about the people in the school to know who to suspect. I am bothered about little kids with runny noses. I don't mean I am fussy or anything like that. I don't know why. I am just bothered. I am bothered about walking to school slow. The rule is nobody is supposed to be on the school grounds until 10 minutes before the first bell rings. Mom has an early class. The house is so lonely in the morning when she's gone that I can't stand it and I leave when she does. I don't mind being alone after school, but I do in the morning before the fog lifts and our cottage seems dark and damp. Mom tells me to go to school, but to walk slow, which is, which is hard work. Once I tried walking around every square in the sidewalk, but that got boring. So did walking heel toe, heel toe. Sometimes I walk backwards, except when I cross the street, but I still get there so early, I have to sort of hide behind the shrubbery so Miss, Mr. Friendly won't see me. I am bothered when my dad telephones me and finishes by saying, well, keep your nose clean, kid. Why can't he say he misses me? And why can't he call me Lee? I am bothered when he doesn't phone at all, which is most of the time. I have a book of roadmaps and try to follow his trips when I hear from him. When the TV worked, I watched the weather on the news so I would know if he was driving through blizzards, tornadoes, hail like golf balls, or any of that fancy weather they have other places in the U.S. Question 10, what do you wish? Another very good question. I wish somebody would stop stealing the good stuff out of my lunch bag. I guess I wish a lot of other things too. I wish some someday dad and bandit would pull up in front, of, in front in the rig. Maybe dad would be hauling a 40 foot reefer, in parentheses he writes, that means refrigerated trailer, which would make his outfit add up to 18 wheels altogether. Dad would yell out of the cab, come on, Lee, hop in and I'll give you a lift to school. Then I'd, then I'd climb in and Bandit would wag his tail and lick my face. We'd take off with all the men in the gas station staring at us. Instead of going straight to school, we'd go barreling along the freeway, looking down the tops of ordinary cars, then down the off-ramp and back to school just before the bell rang. I guess I wouldn't seem so medium then, sitting up there in the cab in the front of the 40-foot reefer. I'd jump out and dad would say, so long, Lee, 
be seeing you, and Bandit would give a little bark, like, goodbye, I'd say. Drive carefully, Dad, like I always do. Dad would take a minute to write the truck's logbook, write in the truck's logbook, drove my son to school. Then the truck would pull away from the curb with all the kids staring and wishing their dads drove big trucks too. There, Mr. Henshaw, that's the end of your crummy questions. I hope you are satisfied for making me do all this extra work. Fooey on you, Lee Botts. December 4th. Dear Mr. Henshaw, I'm sorry I was rude in my last letter when I finished answering your questions. Maybe I was mad about other things, like Dad forgetting to send this month's support payment. Mom tried to phone him at the trailer park where, where as Mom says, he hangs his hat. He has his own phone in his trailer, so the, bro so the broker who lines up jobs for him can, can reach him. I wish he still hauled sugar beets over to the refinery and speckles so he might come and see me. The judge in the divorce said he has a right to see me. When you answered my questions, sorry, when you answered my questions, you said the way to get to be an author was to write. You underlined it twice. Well, I sure did a lot of writing, and you know what? Now that I think about it, it wasn't so bad when I wasn't when it wasn't for a book report or a report on some country in South America or anything where I had to look things up at, in the library. I even sort of miss writing now that I'm finished your questions. I get lonesome. Mom is working overtime at Catering by Katie because people give a lot of parties this time of year. When I write a book, maybe I'll call it The Great Lunch Bag Mystery because I have a lot of trouble with my lunch bag. Mom isn't so great on cooking roasts and steaks now that Dad is gone, but she makes me good lunches with sandwiches on whole wheat bread from the health food store with Good filling spread all over the way, all the way to the corners. Katie sends me little cheesecakes baked just for me on or stuffed mushrooms and little things she calls canapes. And he puts in parentheses how to say canapes. Sometimes I get a slice of quiche. Again, in parentheses, quiche. Today I'm supposed to have a deviled egg. Katie buys the smallest eggs for parties so half the egg can be eaten in one bite and won't spill on people's carpets. She puts a little curry powder in with the mashed up yolk, which she squirts out of a tube so it looks like a rose. At lunchtime, when I opened my lunch bag, my egg was gone. We leave our lunch bags and boxes, mostly bags because no sixth grader wants to carry a lunch box, lined up along the wall under our coat hooks at the back of the classroom behind a sort of partition. Are you writing another book? Please answer my letter so we can be pen pals. Still your number one fan, Lee Botts. December 12th. Dear Mr. Henshaw, I was surprised to get your postcard from Wyoming because I thought you lived in Alaska. Don't worry, I get the message. You don't have a lot of time for answering letters. That's okay with me because I'm glad you are busy writing a book and chopping wood to keep warm. Something nice happened today. When I was hanging around behind the bushes at school, waiting for the 10 minutes to come before the bell, first bell rings, I was watching Mr. Friendly raise the flags. Maybe I better explain that, fla that, that the flag of California is white with a brown bear in the middle. First, Mr. Friendly fastened the U.S. flag on the, on the halyard. That's a new word in my vocabulary. And then fastened the California flag below it. When he pulled the flags to the top of the flagpole, the bear was upside down with his feet in the air. I said, hey, Mr. Friendly, the bear is upside down. This is a new paragraph because Miss Martinez says there should be a new paragraph when a different person speaks. Miss Friendly said, well, so it is. How would you like to turn him upside? Oh, let's try that again. Well, so it is. How would you like to turn him right side up? So I got to pull the flag down, turn the bear flag the right way, and raise both flags again. Mr. Friendly said maybe I should come to school a few minutes every morning to help him with the flags, but please stop walking backwards because it was it's making him nervous. So now I don't have to walk quite so slow. It was nice to have somebody, no somebody notice me. Nobody stole anything from my lunch today because I ate it on the way to school. I've been thinking about what you said on your postcard about keeping a diary. Maybe I'll try it. Sincerely, B. Botts. December 13th. 
I bought a composition book, like you said. It is yellow with a spiral binding. On the front, I printed, Diary of Lee Marcus Botts, Private, Keep Out, This Means You, with one, two, three, four, five exclamation points. When I started to write it, I didn't, sorry, when I started to write in it, I didn't know how to begin. I felt as if I should write, Dear Composition Book, but that sounded dumb. So, so does Dear Piece of Paper. The first page still looks the way I feel, blank. I don't think I can keep a diary. I don't want to be a nuisance to you, but I wish you would tell me how I am stuck. Puzzled reader, Lee Botts. December 21st. Dear Mr. Henshaw, I got your postcard with a picture of the bears. Maybe I'll do what you said and pretend my diary is a letter to somebody. I suppose I could pretend to write to dad, but I used to write to him and he never answered. Maybe I'll pretend I am writing to you because when I answered all your questions, I got the habit of beginning, dear Mr. Henshaw. Don't worry, I won't send it to you. Thanks for the tip. I know you're busy. Your grateful friend, Lee Botts. All right, and that is the end of that section. So we will continue on our next video.